people accomplish what you will. There'll never be a revolution if the African be still. This is a, what I understand of soul of consciousness is a consciousness that went around the globe mm -hmm. when when God was created, so to speak. We were dealing with the God, the one God. Mm -hmm. But pre that, we were dealing primarily with the feminine principles. Mm -hmm. And that's what got ushered out, and that's what became bad, dark, and the taboo. Mm -hmm. So to go into Kemet and find it, you've got to go into the dark and into the taboo. Right. To find it, you've got right. to find it in the light, in the soul. Yeah, yeah, scared people right now. Yeah. It's yeah. dark and taboo, you know? it's all like <laughs> juju. Mean, exactly. Well, that's what it is. That's, yeah. what, it, that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. It's just that these words are loaded. You yes, mean? Yes, and when we do it, it's dark and it's bad. But when I went to the events and they show you the South Americans, I'm like, that's, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, but they, they, they're honouring that mm -hmm. and respecting that, yes, you know, yes, as, yes, yes, as yes. something holier than thou, which it is, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So when you bring it back home, you go to Kemet, those are the archetypes and the tear that you're dealing with, but primarily you can go into the Kemet Book of the Dead, it's all up inside there, right. dealing with Patar in particular, because mm -hmm. Patar, you now people familiar with Patar, he's mm -hmm. the, you know, got various archetypes, mm -hmm. but he's a, a later version also of Bess. Mm -hmm. So Bess is like the, so I'm dealing with the earliest archetypes that we find that the soul was inherited. And Bess and Patar are both credited, credited with being like the god of gods, the creator gods, gods of liberation in particular. And um, their in Patar's aspects is the bull, mm -hmm. it's known as Apis or Apis mm -hmm. the bull. And you've got his counterpart segment or an earlier version is Hathor, Heteru, mm -hmm. who's also the cow. Mm -hmm. So when you get into the mythologies of the bull and the cow, mm -hmm. this is when you start to delve into what were these guys, what were these deities bringing. Mm -hmm. So Patar, they would say that the bull was known as a Eucharist. Mm -hmm. And they would eat, it's all coated, but they would eat um, arse meat, donkey arse meat, mm -hmm. and bull's blood. Mm -hmm. But you've seen some of these rites and rituals, like when you deal with the Eastern, like in Sudan, and you deal with Ethiopia, you see the, the, the groups, the Dinka, for example, who deal with the cows and bulls, mm -hmm. and they do certain ceremonies where they let the blood spill and they drink the blood fresh, or all that, like we do some stuff that at the time was like, whoa, mm. that's, you know, that's, what is that? You know what I mean? What is that? Mm. But you start seeing these groups that are tied into these cow and bull cults, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. they're the ones who hold the mysteries. Mm -hmm. So within that book, within the Kemetic Book of the Dead, the Qatar, he's known as the Open. He's also credited with a ceremony called the Open of the Mouth Ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And that Open of the Sign, if you follow the trail back, they told me back in the, so what are you opening your mouth for? I mean, these are the questions that I ask. So you're opening the mouth, so what you're opening your mouth for? To talk, to eat, to mm -hmm. breathe. I mean, there's different reasons why. Mm -hmm. So I'm exploring all of that. But they would say that they, the Tar was like a Eucharist, or the Eucharist being a sacrament. So it's, and it sounds very similar to like a Jesus quote when he says, eat my body, eat, you know, drink my blood. Mm -hmm. Like you start seeing where certain religions have picked up on this knowledge from. Mm -hmm. And you really, you really is that the Tar, mm -hmm. yeah, later becomes in the Christian pantheon, Peter. Yeah, so I'm going to show you because I'll give you a reference of the ancient and I'll give you the present if we're because we're in the religion team. And they're both the, the mounds or the rocks of the mystery system or the religion. Mm -hmm. And then what were these, what were the mysteries? What was the mound? What was it symbolic of? Then you see that Peter in biblical reference is also the open mm -hmm. and he represents the Pope or the Pope represents Peter in that regard. This role play, they're playing out this role play that comes from ancient Kemet. So I'm saying this to say that anybody who's been to church on a Sunday, by taking in the Holy Communion ceremony, I always ask them, well, did you truly have Holy Communion? Did you commune with the Holy? Because mm -hmm. that's what that ceremony <coughs> is really, yeah, is really about. But did they just give you a wafer and a little bit of wine <laughs> in some cases? And then you walk around and you come around and you just go out committing sin again. <laughs> that's what we do. But when you have true Holy Communion, like described in the Book of the Dead, that's been transferred all the way down into the Bible that you've got, what Qatar and some of these other deities were, present, were representing was the gift that the bulls or the cows provide the people. This is the mystery, some of the mysteries in Kemet because the, basically magic mushrooms grow on the cow and the bull dung. And these animals were considered sacred because of this gift that they bear the local people. I mean, so all of this developed into the ceremonies and rites that we've got in ancient Kemet, known as the Open of the Mass Ceremony, which later becomes Holy Communion. Where when you have these ceremonies, because they give you a little wafer in, in the church, and a little, that's a mushroom cabinet. You know what I mean? And even in the church, the stand they pull it on is called a little mushroom. And it's all like, it's all just when you take the time to do the Googles, mm -hmm. it's just like it's all in your face. Right. So then when you see the various archetypes in the religion, and you can follow the trail back to their mm -hmm. origins, you see that whether it's Mary, Joseph, you know, they're all like, it's all kind of like plant. It's like a cold, bro. So, what you're trying to tell me now, yeah, and the people there, because I'm not a Christian or a Muslim or an American, any sort of respect, but for those who follow those traditions, mm -hmm. you're telling me that Jesus was eating the mushroom. Well, it's ironic because they would say, well, there's no Jesus. Jesus is a mushroom. Right. See, I said that. Yeah, just so, yeah, like, so there's no Moses. 
There's no burning bush, it's just mushroom. No, so the, oh, the burning bush. You yes. want to talk about the burning Burn bush? Burning bush. All right, so what is the bush? You do your Google. The bush is the acacia tree. Right. So it makes references. When you go into, don't just read the Bible. You right. read the Bible encyclopedias. Right, and you read, right, right. Go to the scholars, what they're saying. And they tell you what the tree is. The tree is the acacia tree. Yes, yes. The acacia tree throughout Africa, mm -hmm. the so-called Middle East, is a sacred tree amongst mm -hmm. our people and all others. It's a DMT-containing tree. Mm -hmm. It's the same trees that allow you when you burn them and you mm. inhale the smoke mm. to have psychedelic experiences right. or when you brew it in a drink, you will then commune with God and have visions of seeing God. That's how the ancients, the prophets, you know, Buddha being another one, you know, we can come out of the main religion of Buddhism mm. that's dealing with, you know, consciousness again. We call it Christ consciousness. Yes. It's not people per se, it's mm. a consciousness. Yes, yes. And it's through these experiences that you have to that consciousness. And yes. Buddha, the same as scholars out there, will tell you that Buddha's a mushroom. You know, we go into the Hindu tradition, you see Vishnu and Shiva and all these, because they're all from them same cannibal, cowboy cults. Mm -hmm. And anytime they've got those associations, they will have these, these blue colors, they draw their or paint their deities or their artifacts blue or green. Because these mushrooms, when we touch them and they connect with um, oxygen, they bruise blue. Mm -hmm. So we call, refer to them as the blue mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole connection with, you know, the colors of the mushrooms, mm -hmm. the effects that they have, mm -hmm. how you use them, and how, yeah, how are people using them. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so we're, we're going to approach the, the conclusion of, of, this, uh, of this session right now. I, I do want to give people some practical tips, yeah? Mm. Because, like you say, you know, I, I, I teach um, Sivatawi, yeah? Um, we call Sima Kemi Yoga, right? Mm. And so, in terms of, we, we do guided meditations, yeah? Mm. Because oftentimes, like we were saying before, people, you know? need some assistance, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if one is going to go on this journey now and they're not part of a, a community, they don't they don't have an owner um, to, to you know to assist them, how would you um, uh, uh, advise they approach this experience? Sure. So the first thing I would say I want to make it really clear we're based in the UK, we're having this conversation in the UK and using these substances is illegal. So I just want to make that clear. All right. I'm not encouraging anybody to go out there and break the law by standing or swearing it. Indeed. So with that said um so this I'm clear, not, this clear. <laughs> I'm not encouraging anybody to go out there and you know do anything that they consider they don't want to do. Yes. Um, but with that said, um, the, you know, as it, I was inducted into this, you know, what you basically want to be working towards is having a journey of the alarm into the alarm. So right. you really want to be doing this by yourself right. in the dark mm -hmm. to get into the mysteries of darkness, right. dark matter, mm -hmm. dark the dark material, your consciousness and all that mm -hmm. type of stuff there. And that might be a heavy ride for some on the first roll. Mm -hmm. So t in general, we say that you, you start off with somebody. Mm -hmm. Generally, people say, you know, a guide, mm -hmm. we just refer to them as a sitter. This person doesn't need to have experience per se, because mm -hmm. what you're ultimately doing, you're going into your mind. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing, you're going into your own mind. So the only thing you need to be scared of is yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you just need someone who's there to sell you. When you feel like you are God and you really don't know that all of this thing that you're carrying and wearing mm -hmm. just holding you back, you know, and you want to go out there and tell the world, your religious is not right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really good. I'm feeling you, I'm feeling yeah. you, and I'm out there. Because you get, you, you, you may come out in and you, you feel a certain, you mean, you be inspired in certain ways. Yeah. So you've got that person there where they're just basically making sure that you're safety first. Mm -hmm. You're safety first. Mm -hmm. You ain't trying to climb. And I don't know anyone, I always say that, but I don't know anyone who tries to climb out of windows. Right. All, of, all of that is a lot of fear monger, yes, scare yes. tactics. Yes. It's just that you may want to go out, because right. that is a big part of it, yeah. it's the nature going outside. Yeah. And when you go outside where one car turns into three cars and you're trying to cross the road, that's not a safe place to be. So right. you need someone with you to say, relax, right. hold it down. Yeah. Or if you are, let me come with you, let right. me support you on, you know, on that path. Right. And we would say that you would have that experience at least three times, right. you know, with somebody around to make sure that you start to feel this thing out and you know what it's about. Because it's not drink, it's not marijuana, it's not none of them things that we're familiar with if you've not done it before. If you've right. not done it before, it's, different it's nothing you've ever experienced okay. before. That's what I can be really clear about. Right. So yeah, you don't jump into it lightly. You know I mean, you do your Googles, you do your research, you determine why are you doing this. Mm -hmm. Some people, they hear about microdosing, mm -hmm. they hear about it's good for anxiety, depression, they jump on it for those purposes. Mm -hmm. Some people, like, especially in our community, they have become very much aware of how psychedelics can support with trauma. Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. I would like, if we could say one thing I'd like to you know, bring to our people's attention, particular is that you know there's some studies that they've done recently with soldiers mm -hmm. um, you know that have been going off to the war fighting they see people's heads get blown off all the rest of it come back and 
neck in the carrying what's known as PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, they're doing studies with MDMA as well as psilocybin, which is that active ingredient inside the mushrooms. And what they determined was that these soldiers that were coming back after the war, you know, after war, they can't deal with their family, can't deal with society. They're taking them through a series of sittings, in some cases once, but up to three times where they're taking a particular dosage and then they're given therapeutic support through that. And what they discovered is with the soldiers that it helped 100% of the soldiers mm -hmm. with these processes. So these plants, along with the right support, it helped 100%, 67% of the PTSD was totally removed. Mm -hmm. And the remaining 32%, where it is, they, um, it was significantly reduced where they didn't need to take their medicine on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Where am I going with this in relation to our people and the baggage and the load that we carry? Some of you, your audience may be familiar with Dr. Dr. Joy DeGroy and others, you make reference to post-traumatic slave syndrome. You know, and this bespoke, unique luggage that we carry as people of African descent. Mm -hmm. And that led me to understand about epigenetics mm -hmm. and about how we inherit trauma and can pass on trauma to family to family. And that's mm -hmm. what we've been going through and experiencing for over 500 plus years mm -hmm. without any support, any other whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So with that said, Marfin is working with young people, the young soldiers on the street mm -hmm. who didn't sign up for this war, mm -hmm. just thrown into it mm -hmm. and dealing with what they've got to deal with. Mm -hmm. What we're discovering is that we can potentially help 100% of our soldiers with this, we can deal with our trauma, with our load, to see about baggage. You know, we've got testimonies out there, bro. People I've worked with personally, you know, we've got mothers who, who are at the last edge of, you know, their sanity, dealing with their sons because they're on the roads, shot in, doing the county line stuff back and forth. And, you know, unfortunately, because it's illegal, we can't speak and put it out there in a way that we can work with the soldiers or we can wait for the government to make it legal set up their centres and charge us maybe a thousand, two to three thousand pound each time we need to go sit in there and do it and say, or say it's the white boys who are saying our team, so I'll just leave it alone and stay in hell as it is and not shift the consciousness as well as our, you know, what, we're, what we need to do. Yeah. I honestly feel, um, you know, I've been, I've been affiliated with loads of all the organisations and I've been in the circles, I've been in, I've been in, I've been in the rooms and, you know, I asked the same questions as to, you know, my Bridgman's reason earlier on, you know, I was in, my first, my first conscious group was Nation of Islam, mm -hmm. by way of Public Enemy and Ice Cube, you know, mm -hmm. that's what inspired me as a young teenager, I'm like, who are these brothers, what are they saying, where are they getting that from? And no disrespect to the nation, because I got a lot from there, but it's like, what moved me was that we need black schools, we need black banks, we need our own this and we need our own that. And brother, I'm a grown ass man, and, I, and I'm still questioning where is the foundation for us to, to, to deal with that. And what I've discovered in my own experience, on my journey, setting up my own organisations, working with others, oh, God, it's ego. A lot of it is our ego that's preventing us from true growth, true development. Mm -hmm. Because we all want to be the leader, we all want to be heard, we want to be seen to be the man doing mm -hmm. something that's from the streets to in the organisations themselves. Mm -hmm. What this experience is going to do, what the Asian Chemites were really were dealing with, to liberate yourself so you can sit around a table with your man then mm -hmm. and truly build, you need to die. Exactly. And I mean, yeah, it's an ego death. That's what these experiences mm -hmm. of psychedelics do for you. They make you have an ego death. Mm -hmm. makes you realise if you can be honest, the shit you talk, it's gonna burn you. Yeah. As much as you think this and that, it's gonna be like, bro, you ain't all that. I'm gonna show you, as my brother said, one brother, perfect example, came around, he had a the experience, he came in and says, bro, I'm a god, you know? I'm like, that's right. He come around 10 minutes later, he says, I'm a dickhead, you know? <laughs> says, that's right, too. As long as you can swing that pendulum, right. yeah, and understand that then you're gonna be able to move through this. And some of us are not really, and they admit that we're a dickhead at that time, you know, we've got those qualities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and that's what, you know, that's what it is. And what I've gathered is that the people who I sit with now, when we have these experiences, we sit around the table, we truly build. Mm. Because we can put a lot of that stuff to the side. We don't want to be seen and heard. I don't want to be seen and heard. Yes. I do this because I know that there's very few people mm -hmm. speaking this. And I know what it's done for me. And I've done for my brother who was sitting there earlier on. I know what it's doing for us, you know, in regards to us, in our units. So it starts with you. Right. It starts with your household, mm -hmm. then it starts with your street, no matter who it is. Mm -hmm. I want to know that I can get up and feel good about myself, mm -hmm. feel good about the people I'm around, and that's what it opens up. And for the most part, when we hear of the psychedelic thing, we see it from a perspective where, you know, what I grew up thinking, but this is just what the white boys used to do. They go around hugging trees, mm -hmm. they're talking about peace and love, and all that type of stuff. I'm not old in a minute, I need someone in my community, I need peace and love in my community. Like, I don't, why, why would I knock that? Why am I knocking that? Like, that's weird. Like, we need that in our community, you know? Is that you're telling me when you take it, that's what it makes you do. I want to have more peace and love for my brother when I sit down with him. Let's do this. That's how I'm moving because I want results, bro. I actually really truly want results and I'm not a lip service team. So going back to the point, sorry, just with the uh -huh. post-traumatic strip slave syndrome, mm -hmm. we can address these things, but it requires our people yeah. to sit around and come up with things rather than the NHS and some of these other bodies that are currently looking into it for, yeah, on yeah. our behalf.
pass. I've got, I've got, I've got one, one more question before I get to that question. Um, I'm seeing what your, your last point in the context of the frameworks that we have within our philosophies of the self. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at that, the parts of the soul and them kind of things, the ancient mm -hmm. Kevin, you know, when they're dealing with the car, the bar, mm -hmm. the red, Saku, mm -hmm. and Shekemen, and that kind of things. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it seems to me that, um, that, that, that being able, that the self being uh, a collection of cells, if that makes sense, or mm -hmm. parts of the self, mm -hmm. um, gives you a framework to, of, a, a, or a guide for when you're actually meditating on the self, you're, you're actually able to to develop different aspects of the self quite specifically in relation to identifying what those things are and how you need to bring them together, how you need to unify them. So I'm, I'm seeing that, and then if, I'm, if I take it to like the Ifa tradition, like all of these Arisha that we have are parts of the self and they represent principles of the self. So it, it, in, in, in that kind of sense, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it, I'm, I'm kind of just tying the, the philosophy to the experience from a from a psychiatric perspective or a psychological perspective. Um, if, I don't know if, I, if that makes sense. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with that said, for all the knowledge that I gleaned, whether it was from Bobby Hemet, the Nation, the Islam, Holy Tabernacle, Malachi, if all the all the schools, you know, the schools of thought, it's like it all made sense. Right. It all lines up why I needed to learn that and where it leads you to right. for you to understand the right. cell right. From, with the cells right. or the cell that you end up locking yourself in, right. the psychological cell because yes. we're not dealing with the ori, you know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. Yes. Which, you yes. know, and yes. then we have, might have yes. a main ori, yes. but all of them are each you know, yes. aspects of yourself. Yeah, of yourself. And yes. That's what this experience opens you up to, that yes. self, that realisation that it will leave you and it will come back to you. Yeah, man. And you might see it just like you're watching a DVD player yeah, man. and you can't yeah, deny that. It's a serious thing. Oh, yeah. Seriously, like in in that, that that Orisha tradition, they tell you that your chief Orisha is your is your Ori. Yeah, yeah? Like right. before anything else, you you start with your yeah. own personal yeah. Ori, yeah. which is your own head, your own your own that's consciousness. Right. That's right. Um, and that's the, this is the this is the date that never leaves you. That's right. Your own consciousness. Yeah. So it's it's a it's an interesting one. And, and finally, then to bring it back to things that people are used to, um, you mentioned earlier different practices like the yoga and you know meditation, tree lab, you know, all them kind of practices there. Yeah. Um, and so, just in terms of, because um, this sounds like a, a thing whereby, when, once you go into it, like your 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 faculties are not necessarily your own, right? Mm -hmm. So, is is it possible to use what your the these psychedelics that you're referring to in practices like that oh, yoga, yeah, most um, tree of life meditation? Like oh, most things. definitely. Yeah. Like as I said earlier on, what I've uh, what's been revealed to me and then what I experience is that mm -hmm. those experiences that you're talking about, yoga, meditation, breath work, you name it, come out of the psychedelic experience. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about yoga and not talk about psychedelics. Mm -hmm. Even if we're talking about the origins of it being African, mm -hmm. the ancient texts refer to yoga coming out of soma, mm -hmm. S-O-M-A. Soma is a psychedelic, whether it's mushrooms or a concoction of the blessed bit, mm -hmm. it's talking about this brew that they make mm -hmm. that allowed, again, um, the elders or the wise ones to commune to download that information. So that's why I refer to it as technology. Mm -hmm. It gives you access to iCloud. You know what I mean? You download the files, <laughs> and whatever files you receive, yes. you apply. So if you're a drummer, yes. it's going to give you files on drumming. Yes. If you're a warrior, it's going to give you your warrior files. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. If you're, you know, whatever, it's going to give you because you're going into yourself, yes, yeah. into your. But you've seen films like Osmosis Jones, mm. like the Chris Old. I haven't seen it. But it's yeah. like the animation, you know. Yeah. And there's another one from back in the days where. Um, <clears throat> The, the guy gets injected, Bill Murray, it's like old children films, but he gets injected into, um, the girl gets, he gets injected to, in, into, his, in, into his own body. Right, right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Yes, but yes, this yes. relationship you start mm -hmm. to have with your own body. Mm -hmm. So going back to the point, yes, yoga, meditation, they come out of the experience, they're complementary technologies. Right. So for me personally, I utilize my, my power plants with my yoga work. Because right. you see that they don't go, I mean, they don't, they're not, they yeah. Conflict, yeah. yeah. Um, through that experience, and on a light note, that I discovered my toes. You know, <laughs> this Phil's experience to combine allowed me to truly discover my toes. Yeah. Like to this day, I'm indebted to my toes for just not acknowledging them for what their value <laughs> and where they've got me, and how they've got me from point A. Because I've been doing everything else on the body, stretching all that. It's like, right, you just need to do it. Yeah, and I had yeah, a whole yeah, day yeah. epiphany it's on, a on, my, on my toes, and yeah. that's what the experience done. Yeah. And then it allowed me to explore every single muscle in my body. I know what you need. I know what you need. And the, the first of my experience that I was, I was doing um, 
uh, a drama workshop. So as a warm up, you know, you do things with your body here. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to do all these slow movements and that kind of thing. But like, so you don't just put out your arm. You have to really, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And you get to realize, rah, like, I don't actually know my body. You see what I'm saying? It's a mad thing that like, we're in our bodies all the time, yeah, yeah. but we don't properly pay attention yeah, yeah. to this vessel that we're in. For real, and for so, real. and I think that's a good place to start in, in, that, in that respect, because obviously we, we, we live in a physical universe. As far as, far as our everyday perception is concerned, mm -hmm. and so getting that realization first and foremost yeah, yeah. is probably a, a good place to, to, to yeah. start. It's a, it's a close up, but let's gonna ask Brother Darren to let us know where he can be found on social media and the World Wide Web. Cool, man, bless up, bro. I could be found on social media as Darren the Baron, as Darren D A W -R, R E N L E Baron B A R O N. That's my website, DarrenTheBaron.com, Instagram, Facebook, all of that good stuff. And check out my YouTube channel where I'll be not just myself but others who are giving their testimonies to their experiences as well as benefits of being able to utilize these technologies and move forward. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how I'm proud. Give thanks, it. Much appreciated. Thank Much appreciated, King. King. This is Din Darren Springer. Yes, indeed, Kings and Queens, right here on Got Kush TV. A little bit of a different interview, do you know what I'm saying? We look forward to getting your testimonials from wherever you got the things from, which we will not make up. We want to hear your experiences on Got Kush TV, Kings and Queens. And yeah, man, we like to, you know, to, to bring you something different, you know what I'm saying? We like to bring you something, you know, out of this normal, everyday reality, you know what I'm saying? So we give thanks for that, and we give thanks to Robin Darren for being there and bringing the information for us. Stay tuned for more interviews on Got Kush TV and always remember, you ain't got nothing if you ain't got Kush. What's that? What's that? What's empires in Africa called Kush? Timbuktu, where every race came to get books. My success to you, even if you wish me the opposite. Sooner or later, we'll all see who 